welcome back to the session on design thinking this particular topic we are starting now is called multi y also popularly known as five y's this was coined by toyota in the 70s and became very popular in the shop floor it's a very kid like method we looked at it in the past as well we showed you an example we're going to deal with this method in a little more detail as to what these five y's actually means so it could be a series of y's one after the other um, the question why this happens why this happens and you keep drilling down now there is a chain of y's that you can construct build so as so that uh, it all forms a logical a connected logical reasoning to that so Uh, you have to assume certain things initially and you can get it correlated when you talk to a customer you talk to some experts whether this actually makes sense or you can even go back to the field and get some data to to correlate that so i'll give you a very very simple uh, way to test this also graphically you can represent this and it's much easier to understand that way so like i said this is based on toyota's five ys approach we will use it for our own convenience so we go back to this illustration of my favorite student who used to come very late to class and very regularly at that he was a regular at coming late to class i always wondered why uh, he was able to do this so i just wanted to get to the bottom of it uh, yes i wanted to give the student a hard time as you heard me say earlier so that's so that's what we will uh, look at as an illustration just to begin with so that anybody with any context can understand this example as to how this five ways works to to look at it first at level 1 the basic premise the first why the answer of why does the student come so late to class so regularly is because they woke up late let's look at this in a graphical format here is the time he wakes up so it's very late that he wakes up and hence actually comes to class late so this is late also so he comes to class late because he woke up late so that's the relationship between uh, what you see on the x axis um, x axis here at the bottom and at your left is the y axis where you are tracking on time performance of the student now he has come late to class because he is late to wake up as simple as that now again this as i have marked at the bottom here is an assumption i wonder if that is the truth but that's what he told me so i will take it at face value now if i were Uh, analytical about this very methodic about this i would track him on a day to day basis on whether he actually shows up uh, at what time does he show up you know you can you can put plots here and see if it actually marks up what time does he go to sleep and what time does he wake up so you can be analytical about this and actually do a plot and see if it actually matches up so this is one way of doing it so but still the assumption is that if they woke up early they would be on time to the class so that's the assumption i have okay so with this when we carry forward now why uh, it begs the next question why or why do they wake up late like this you know if you want to come on time in class they should wake up early as simple as that but uh, apparently not so it brings us to the next level of why reasoning why reasoning so they woke up late because they slept late okay so he woke up at say 8 am for a 8:30 am class uh, that's too late big why because he slept at 4 am at at uh, in the morning so that's too late uh, is not getting enough sleep so that's why so here if you look at my x axis again he the late hour of sleeping of going to sleep actually impacts his performance to class He is late now if we were he uh, the at uh, the other side of the spectrum is that if he wakes up early he will be on time to class and and keep me happy in the process this so this is a level 2 where he is 
late uh, to go to sleep and he is late to class. If he is early to go to sleep, he will be on time. And again here the assumption now added to the first level of reasoning, they slept early, they would wake up early and, and hence would be on time to class. So, as simple as that. So, this is our assumption again to be tested you can be analytical about it, you can uh, take data points uh, and, and uh, verify if this is really the truth or is there some kind of dependency you can you can be analytical about this. Okay. Now, to take this rationale the next level. So, this is a level 3 where well I asked him and he said well you know I have lots of courses your course is not the only one I take I have management I have this I have that. So, he enumerated about 10 courses oh boy. So, 10 courses means 10 deadlines. So, he has way too many deadlines and hence he is late to class. You can see the rationale led me to the belief that since he has signed, signed up for too many classes, courses and hence he has too many deadlines and hence he is late to bed and hence uh, late to wake up and hence he is also late to my class. So, the simplest solution for him is to enroll for very few classes and he would actually show up on time. Again, in the past if he has some data, you can track his on time performance to see if he is on time, if he has taken fewer courses, if he is uh, late when he has average number of courses and he is very late because he has too many courses. So, this could be the level of reasoning and, and so on and so forth, you can keep going down. So, actually the solution here is no big deal, you can actually boil it down to how might we reduce the number of courses that he enrolls so that he shows up on time in class. So, the performance that I am monitoring in this case of the student is the, his on time performance and the variable that we have will let him enroll for many courses or enroll for very few courses. So, as I said this relies on the assumption that if they had less deadlines they would sleep early and if they slept early they would wake up early and if they wake up early they are on time for the class. There is a huge line of reasoning which is built on top of that. So, all this has to be true for our on time performance to be on. So, I will take another problem this time a more serious problem to illustrate how these 5 y's work in another example. I had a client who had primary revenue coming from automobile servicing. So, he used to do uh, his servicing uh, overhaul of uh, vehicles and that is where his revenue came from. He was running a dealership uh, not too far from here and all his revenue actually came from uh, this servicing of two wheelers. Now, I one day I noticed that he was not too happy with the way his business was being run. Uh, he looked sad and I said, so, what is up? Uh, why are you sad? Uh, can you explain? And he told me, well, my direct revenue, he was looking at a big spreadsheet uh, in front of him and he said, look at this, the revenue seems to be dwindling. I said, whoa, yeah, it, it is a serious problem, I, 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 I can understand. Now, can you explain to me what is happening? Uh, why uh, is your direct revenue from automobile servicing, which I knew he was doing, is so low? So, uh, upon grilling he told me, well, if I think about it, it is uh, I noticed that after say the second or third year of owning of a vehicle, uh, these customers start dropping off uh, coming to my uh, workshop and they go elsewhere, say find a local mechanic and, and get their servicing done. So, I said wait, 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 wait a minute, well let us analyze it one by one. So, I had uh, 5 y's in mind, the multi y's in mind. So, I took him down slowly and I asked him, so let us phrase your question, why is your direct revenue from automobile servicing so low? Now, now give me a single line answer and his answer was mm, customer visits are few, are fewer than they used to be. Fine. So, I put it on the plot as you can see, this is the similar plot that you saw with my student case on the uh, bottom axis or the x axis, you find that the customer visits, these are customer visits when they are 
few you have low revenue that's what uh, my friend told me my client uh, who is also my friend a good friend so he told me that when we have fewer customer visits the revenue is low so the opposite is also true so when we have many customer visits if they keep coming uh, and if there are many of them many of the customers will coming in regularly then my revenue is very high so that's 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 a linear relationship as we can, we have plotted it. it the reality may not be uh, as simple as this as straightforward as this as linear as this but it's something for you to start working on this is easy to understand so you can actually plot say a histogram plot uh, of you know so many visits and so so much is my revenue you can actually do that you can even put a, a revenue something like that and actually track it much more uh, in detail and see the correlation for yourself so this is easy how do you do this histogram plot well take a piece of paper every time a customer visits note it down and see how much revenue you get out of this for, for that's what i told uh, my friend and we actually found out that this was related so so this this our first level of reasoning was true so i said okay one way is to just stop here and say how may I, how might we increase the customer visits to the workshop well he said i could run promotions i could uh, run uh, you know free uh, labor week so so that anybody who walks in with their vehicle uh, old vehicles in particular gets uh, the labor for free that means there are lots of uh, people who show up and actually my revenue would go up so that uh, is one straight away solution that uh, he was thinking of or he could say this is his other long term vision this is a short term which works every time a promotion runs he has revenue and uh, it just dwindles out because they go back to their local mechanics so as long as the promotion runs they are fine so the question to ask right now would be why don't many customers show up uh, thus which which will result in my high revenue so the answer from him his own mouth uh, this is my customer so i'm doing tracking the customer he told me well some of them live very far away from where i uh, have my workshop uh, and uh, i i've noticed that only people who live close by they visit me often uh, so that that was his reasoning so i said okay that's that brings me to the second plot which is the distance from the customer location if it's far away the my revenue is actually low and uh, hence the opposite of that my uh, corollary to that would be if they are nearby then my revenue is high so this is the direct correlation of what i uh, heard from him as the reasoning to low uh, revenue is related to far uh, distance from the customer location so that was my second level of reasoning now you could go three levels four levels and uh, get more out of this case uh, so the, here again you could stop and say i can i uh, how might we actually decrease the uh, customer location uh, distance uh, from from uh, where his workshop was the answer was uh, already on top of his mind saying well i could have many more workshops uh, in different parts of the city and here we get into a problem okay so that that could be one solution if he can afford that that is if he or if he could tie up with somebody who has uh, or with with even these local mechanics i mean why treat them as competitors you could treat them as your uh, your your collaborators and say hey uh, if these guys show up uh, i i'm ready to give you certain percentage i am ready to give you uh, my uh, portion of the revenue uh, if you can also direct them to me so we could actually have a, an arrangement so here the the stress is not on the idea or the cleverness of the idea but the approach in moving this far distance from customer location to near distance from customer location so your ideas have to be in this so that you can increase your revenue so on the x axis if you notice we are looking at it from the customer point of view and here i am looking at from the company perspective the other side of the party so these two guys are at conflict if you look at it uh, from one point of view they are actually competing 
and hence you will have to look at it from both sides and see to that that both of them both of these guys are satisfied so in this we are not looking at what is absolutely clear even in this case or in my students case is that we are not looking at an optimal solution for example we could settle at well if they're just halfway mark and if i i can get portion of the revenue it's okay with me uh, then that would be a compromise if it works for you fine good uh, if the uh, problem conditions allow you to go for a compromise solution so be it but here as innovators as design thinkers we are uh, sort of want to have the cake and eat it too like you heard ashwin uh, comment at some point of time the same applies here is we want both high direct revenue from servicing as well as distance from customer location to be far so they can be where they are and still i should be able to get revenue now i've seen a few automobile uh, particularly in the four wheeler segment adopt this as a pick up and drop so the customer could be wherever they are and they could uh, their vehicle could be picked up we don't need the customer to come all the way to the workshop uh, which is the uh, root of the problem really in that it's not the distance from customer location but uh, distance that the customer travels so this the the wording can actually change and if you change that you can actually get a solution in the form of well he doesn't or she doesn't have to travel they don't have to travel all the way to the workshop but you uh, the 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 servicing uh, people can actually go to the location and pick up the vehicle and drop it off at the end okay and now that leads us to the next level of conflict also saying now how am i going to get enough people if there are too many people asking for the service how many how might i how might we enable the fact that we have so many service people going all over the city wherever the customers are picking them up and then dropping off uh, at the end of the day okay so that would be another the next problem statement so we uh, traverse these level by level uh, using these uh, charts as well as using uh, the the levels of whys uh, different whys and figuring this out for for yourself so uh, in the next uh, segment we will actually be looking at conflicts uh, arising because of solutions that you have introduced uh, that Uh, you know you, even at the earlier uh, level we introduced a, a concept uh, a solution of brand promotion and that led to labor uh, cost uh, revenue loss for you if you if you remember my solution it was to have free labor week and that week i actually lost revenue from labor now how might we keep retain this labor cost and yet have my high revenue yet bring the customer uh of more often in this case so that's a, that's a conflict to be addressed which is what our next would be thank you